The time has finally come for Pulse Jets Part 2. If you haven't seen my intro to Pulse Jets video, don't worry about watching it. It's pretty much just an intro to how these Pulse Jets work and explaining the very basics behind how this engine works. This is the Reins Pot, one of the simplest Pulse Jets to build. For those of you who haven't seen that video, let me try to explain the basics of how this engine works in under 10 seconds. There's a fuel-air mixture in the bottom of the combustion chamber, which when ignited sends a stream of hot flaming gases out of the end. When it is done expanding, the gases cause a vacuum to form in the combustion chamber, which sucks in more air and some of the flame to ignite the next pulse, which then cycles and causes a net thrust opposite the direction of the hole. Was that 10 seconds? I don't know if that was 10 but if you couldn't tell by the fact that I challenged myself to explain this engine in less than 10 seconds, this is not going to be what this video is about. This video is going to be about all of the different types of designs, more complex but more rewarding designs, all of which I have tried on my own. So let's start with the basics. This is just a combustion chamber with a tapered side on one end, a long wide tube here for the exhaust, and a thinner shorter tube for the intake. And a fuel injector which sprays fuel into the front of the combustion chamber. Now let's imagine we have a fuel air mixture inside of the combustion chamber and ignite it. Well most of the flame would come out of this wide long tube and a little bit would come out of the back. Since the exhaust gases coming out of the smaller tube have less mass, meaning that it has less matter to absorb and disperse energy, it gets sucked in more easily than the more powerful exhaust gases coming out of the wider tube. This then gets sucked in along with fresh air which then mixes with the incoming fuel from the injector causing another pulse in the combustion chamber and repeating the cycle. This is my best attempt at making this type of pulse jet. As you can see it's just a hairspray can with a hole on one side and a long copper pipe attached to the other. In this test the fuel is rubbing alcohol. But there are some flaws with this design. Let's just say, hypothetically, that we have 10 pounds of thrust coming out of the wide end of the combustion chamber and the longer tube. We still have some exhaust coming out of what's supposed to be the intake. Let's just say there are three pounds of thrust here, since it is a lot smaller. Well, now we have two forces that are opposing, meaning to get the net thrust, we have to subtract them. Three subtracted from 10 is seven. So in total, we would get seven pounds of thrust going opposite the direction of the exhaust tube. This is where the Lockwood Hiller pulse jet comes into play. It looks pretty much the same with an inlet and an exhaust and a combustion chamber, but the only difference is the exhaust loops around. So instead of having three subtracted from 10 pounds of thrust, we have three plus 10 pounds of thrust since they are now building on each other rather than subtracting from each other or going against each other. But before I show you my Lockwood Hiller pulse jet, let's talk about the third and final design I will be talking about in this video, the thermojet. The thermojet is pretty much the opposite of a Lockwood Hiller pulse jet. Instead of the exhaust bending around to increase thrust, the intake is flipped to the other side of the combustion chamber. In this case, the engine has two intakes, and instead of having fuel injected directly into the combustion chamber, the fuel is injected into the intakes. But like the first pulse jet, this engine too has its drawbacks. Primarily the fact that the intakes are so close to the exhaust that the explosions happen much faster but at a much smaller volume, meaning there is less net thrust than the much wider known Lockwood Hiller pulse jet. But this didn't stop me from trying to make my own, again out of a hairspray can and a piece of copper tubing, this time with the intakes drilled on the same side as the copper tube. So now that I've explained all three types of engines, it's finally time to talk about my Lockwood Hiller pulse jet. But to do so, I need to go all the way back to the beginning. 
It was the beginning of December 2022. I was in the process of learning about all types of jet engines and wanted to build my own. But every video I saw, the people in it were using tools and skills that I simply did not have. But then one day, scrolling through YouTube, I found this channel, which I have no idea how to pronounce the name of. And after looking through and enjoying some of their videos, I found it. Their second video ever posted was pretty much a tutorial on how to make a pulse jet engine. So I got to building using two pieces of pipe and an empty one pound propane tank as they suggested in their video. Then on December 11th, 2022, we brought it out for its first test run. But after lots of backfiring and trimming down the intake tube, this happened. <laughs> And if you couldn't tell by my maniacal laughter, I was very excited for this first successful test. But this is not the end of the story. In fact, it's pretty much just the beginning. My dad and I still had two goals to achieve. Number one, find a way to easily ignite the engine without the use of a sparkler. And two, find a way to loop the exhaust around to increase the engine's thrust. But it wasn't until the end of the month that we figured out how to achieve one of the goals. In fact, we achieved the second one first. One day, as we were walking through our local hardware store, it hit us. All we needed was in the electrical aisle all along. Conduit. And no, I'm not talking about sauces that you dip foods in. I'm talking about the metal tubes that you put wires in. And this type of metal tubing did not only accomplish the second goal we were hoping to achieve, but it also solved a problem we didn't even think about. The exhaust tube we were using in the first test was a 72 by one and a quarter inch steel pipe. It was very thick and very heavy. The conduit not only came in pre-bent pieces, but was also significantly lighter than the previous tube. Then in the beginning of January, we were able to accomplish our first goal. To do so, we used a glow plug, which is nice because it doesn't require the high voltage necessary for a spark plug. In this photo, you can not only notice the bolts I welded on to hold the glow plug, but also the card I fabricated later on to make a portable setup. Okay, enough talking. But before I show you a full-length test, I need you to go subscribe to this incredible channel that gave me the skills and knowledge to do this. Did you do it? Great. Now, without further ado, here is my Lockwood Hiller Pulse Jet. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Wait, why did you just use a sparkler if you have a glow plug? Well, the truth is I don't have any footage of the glow plug in action. For some reason, my dad and I thought it was a good idea to enlarge the fuel line holes to allow more fuel into the combustion chamber. I guess we forgot that more fuel doesn't just mean more thrust, it also means more heat. And this heat killed the glow plug before we were able to film. But I mean, this channel is named Three Steps Forward, Two Steps Back. And the profile picture for the channel is literally the glow plug we destroyed, so I guess it makes sense. I would film the portable setup for this video, except my father is on a business trip and my mom doesn't really let me do this stuff on my own. I will be updating this project in the coming days or weeks, but for now I guess it's a good time to end the video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something new. Bye for now.